sufficient commitment to the crucified and risen Savior, which establishes an ongoing, an ongoing yes, sir. Amen. personal relationship between a forgiven sinner and a gracious God. Amen. The difference with religion is a lot of people, they'll serve, they'll show up down in the house of God, and their life is built around God, which means this, that God fits in everywhere that nothing else in their life fits in. Where God gets plugged in, that's where God gets plugged in. But a relationship with Jesus Christ is an ongoing, developing, day in and day out, step by step, Walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, where Jesus Christ is everything that you are. Jesus Christ is about everything that you're doing. Just like Uncle John said a while ago, I don't do nothing without Jesus Christ. Some folks, the only time they have anything to do with God is on a Sunday morning setting. Give 11 to 12, 12 30. You won't see him no more till next week. But somebody that is a forgiven sinner, saved by the marvelous grace of God, you can't just operate on a one time a week. You can't just operate on a two time a week. You can't just operate on a three time a week. You have to operate on a day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are a lot of religions in the world that has nothing to do with God. There are a lot of people with religions that will never ever take them to heaven. Can I say something right here? Being at the local Baptist church yep. on September the 3rd, 4th, whatever the date is, 2016, will not carry you to heaven. That's right. Amen. This is not the road to heaven. That's right. Carrying a King James Bible, though I believe in it, I preach it, I teach it, and I stand on it as the sole authority of the God's Word from heaven above. But carrying and toting a King James Bible and believing a King James Bible is not the avenue, hey, my friend, to heaven. But there's only one way, there's only one truth, there's only one life, and there ain't but one way to get to the Father. And Jesus said, You've got to come by me. You're not going to come by the Baptist denomination, the Presbyterian denomination, you ain't going to come no other way except through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Look, religion alone, what, what does a religious person do? Look in your Bible in Luke chapter number 11. The Pharisees here in Luke chapter number 11 had a biblical religion, but they rejected the very one that their religion was centered around. Jesus. Religion alone focuses on the things others can see and forgets that God can see everything about them. Religion. Yeah. In Luke chapter number 11, look at verse number 37. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Speaking of religious Pharisee, religion alone, they focus on the things others can see and forget that God can see everything about them. Look at verse 39. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Now, do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of raving and wickedness? Ye fools, did not ye that made that which is without make that which is within? Also, a lot of religious people today, the reason they're sitting in church oh. today is so that people will see them and understand that they attend a place of worship. You know what? They won't act a certain way with certain people's around because, you see, they want people to believe that they have Jesus Christ in their life. But when they're by themselves, yeah. and you know what? They carry that hatred around in their heart. They carry that gossip and tongue around in their heart. They got jealousy and envy at nighttime when nobody else is around. What they're doing then, when they're surfing the way up there, how they're talking then, the things that were taken up there. And God said, not the preacher, not the Baptist church, but God said, ye fools, do you not know that the same person that made the outward right. is the same one that makes the inward? Religion only worries about what people can see right. and what they're doing. But a relationship is more concerned about what the Alpha and the Omega is seeing and doing. God is everywhere present, nowhere absent. 
Religion alone focuses on things. People see your do. Religion alone. Listen, are you more worried today about what people think about you than what God thinks about you? It's amazing how people that proclaim Jesus in the name of religion can live wicked lifestyles, live smack dead in the middle of the sea. As long as they've got a pat on the back from the parents, a pat on the back from the preacher, a pat on the back from their best friend, they think that it's all right. They still call themselves saved and born again. That is a form of godliness, right. but denying the power thereof. There is a vast difference. But some people say, I don't care what the preacher says. I don't care what the preacher preaches. You may not care what I say, and you may not care about what I preach, but you better care about what the said, the right. Word of God. It was God the Father. It was Jesus Christ. I don't know what kind of Bible you got, but in your Bible, mine reads in chapter 30, 11, verse 39 and 40, and all the way on down through 44, it is written in red. That right. was Jesus Christ be. He said, you Pharisees, you won't worry about me washing my hands before I go to eat. You won't worry about the platter being clean. You won't worry about the outward appearance. You won't worry about what somebody else thinks. Only worry about what God thinks. Religion alone worries about what others may think. It wants to be perfect. Verse 42. But what would you, you Pharisees, for ye tithe men through in all manners of herbs? And pass over judgment in the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the others undone. They're worried to make sure that they got all their T's crossed, their I's dotted. They make sure they got into the house of God on Sunday morning when all the religious crowd shows up. Religion. Want to be perfect. Well, there's no way I'm going to act that way. There ain't no way I'd act that foolish. I'd use that kind of language. I'd do this, that, and the other. You know, worry about being right. Living right. Living right. Come on. People are more concerned about living right than right living. Yeah. There's a big difference between living right. Oh, there ain't no way I go down into the Methodist church. I'm going to go to the Baptist church because I'm worried. Because mama was always Baptist. Daddy was always Baptist. You know what? I'm worried about living right. I'm not going to touch this. I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have a good morals. I'm going to have a good stare. Because I don't want nobody thinking that I like to hit the bottom. I don't like nobody thinking I got depending on a little pill. I don't want nobody thinking I'm a weak individual. Hey, I, I got to live myself and live a righteous life before other people. Do you not understand? That's exactly what religion is doing. There's more people today sitting in this place right now that are more concerned about what somebody on the other side of the church thinks about them more than they're concerned about the one that has the power to cast your soul into hell or to carry your soul to heaven. I'm talking about breaking the cycle of religion. Yeah. Religion alone, it worries about what others may think it wants to be perfect. I used to live that life. Listen, there's a lot of folks that's lost on their way to hell wrapped up in the road of religion. Yeah. But there's also some people, I'm not going to preach on that this morning, that's saved and on their way to heaven, but have a lot of religion in their life. Right. Yeah. On, I preached that last night. Religion alone finds the loopholes, listen to me, the loopholes in the regulations in order to avoid obeying them. Religion finds loopholes. Listen, finds loopholes in the regulations in order to avoid obeying them. Forsake not your sibling of yourselves together. Well, I ain't got to go to church on Sunday night. God understands my situation. Come on. Come on. I could have church at home just all by myself. Where you get that from? Well, because God's with me everywhere I go. I, you, you're right. But the Bible says, forsake not that you sit with yourselves together. I mean, the God, all through the Word of God, He likens this relationship right. as a family setting. He likens the relationship between the sinner and the Savior as a husband right. and a wife. That's like me saying, you know what? I'm married to Laura Ann Blue, but I'm only going to see her on Sunday mornings. I ain't coming home tonight, darling. What were you going to Don't you worry about right now. I can be married over there. I can be married over there. You know what? Too much of that garbage right there. I'm going to come home one day and the door's going to be locked. Ain't nobody going to let me in. I'm trying to get you to see that the way I'm taking this, it ain't nothing but religion. We try to find loopholes in the rules and regulations that we say is there. The truth of the matter is, 
It's not rules and regulations. God just wants to be with you. And you should want to be with God. There's a difference between religion and relationships. 46 says this. Look at Luke 4, 11, 46. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers. For ye laid men with burdens and grievous to be born. And ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. You expect people to treat you right. Come on, come on. But you don't treat people right. Right. Yeah. Come on, brother. Right. You get your feelings hurt when somebody talks about you. Come on. But you don't worry about who you talk about. Come on. You get your feelings hurt when your parents die or, or your grandparents die and nobody shows up to uh, show their love and compassion at your funeral, but you don't show up to show uh, other people's love and compassion. Well, I don't have to. Why? Because I'm busy. I got a career. I got to do this. I got to be a mom. I got to be a daddy. I got to be uh, a plumber. I got to be an electrician. I got to do that. I'm almost there. What we are is religion. Oh. All finds loopholes and regulations in order to avoid obeying them. Religion alone honors heroes of the past, but rejects God's work in the present. Religion honors the heroes of the past. Oh, I remember Grandpa. Oh, I remember Preacher Coley. Oh, how he used to preach with fire and demonstration. Let me say this right here. This is for you and anybody who's going to watch me on the internet. How about sick and tired of seeing these people post pictures on the internet saying, I miss my pastor, Preacher Coley. Come on. And the very ones that's doing it wasn't even here when he was alive, right. pastor of the right. church. They never even barred the doors of the house of God. Right. Don't say right. you love right. somebody. They won't have nothing to do with them. Yeah. Don't say you love right. somebody. You want to know why they're missing here? Because they got less God religion what I'm talking about. They're caught up in a cycle. Why? Because in hard times again, Preacher Coley was there. When the right. baby was sick, Preacher Coley was there. When love was dying, Preacher Coley was there. Oh, and I love and miss my pastor. Oh. Well, you know what? If you really love somebody, you're going to show up when that individual's there. Yeah. You wouldn't have no problem occupying the pew of the house of God. Amen.
I know this ain't a message you want to build a church, but it's a message that will save the church. Oh, that's right. That's right. What are you saying? I'm saying there's a lot of folks sitting occupying the pews. They have religion. Yeah. Religion. When words roll out of somebody's mouth, I don't know what I'm going to do. Amen. When the Lord takes preacher COVID from us. Uh, that wasn't even his wife saying that. Come on. It was a church member. Right. They're not here right now. You want to know why? Because they had religion. Right. Religion. Religion alone honors heroes of the past, but rejects God's work in the present. They worship man more than they worship the Creator. You want to know why? They won't occupy here no more because they had religion. Because they don't like me. They don't like me changing the name to greater life. They don't like this. They don't like that. You know what they're doing? They're honoring the heroes of the past, but are rejecting God's work in the present day. How can you reject that couple? They sit right there. Religion alone seeks, seeks, they seek a deeper message in the Bible in order to be in control. Religion. Verse 52. What would you do, lawyers? Ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. They seek a deeper message message in order to control people. This thing is not about control. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen. Are you living right or right living? Do you have do you have a relationship? Or do you have Listen, there's another account in the Bible of a man by the name of Nicodemus who was a very religious man. John chapter number 3. I'm going as quick as I can. John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Listen, let me tell you something this morning. You may have religion today. Position does not save you. Position does not save you. He was, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Old Nick here, he come to Jesus by night. He's a Pharisee. And this is, he was a member of the Jewish Supreme Court. The Pharisees were right in many areas of their doctrine. But they made one primary mistake. They, they externalized religion. Outwardly, they lived above reproach. They were considered the religious elite. They went to great lengths to obey not only the law, but also the man-made rules of tradition that kept them from breaking the law. He made a distinguished religious position, but a certain position does not save you. It does not save you. Many folks, the reason that they do the things that they do, because they've been told that's the way it's got to do. You've got to wear a tie when you preach or you can't be right with God. You've got to have a suit on when you preach or you can't be right with God. The truth of the matter is there's more folks today that's, like, that's concentrated on the external things of what they're doing in their life. But God says, listen, it's an internal thing, a position of where you at. Being a member of Greater Life Baptist Church don't give you no power to voice with God. Being a pastor of Greater Life Baptist Church Church. Don't give me no brownie points. Being the teacher, being the teacher, being the pastor, being the singer, being the position. None of those things. Position does not do one thing to get you to heaven. It's a relationship right. with Jesus Christ. Amen. Position does not save you. I'm going fast. Popularity does not save you. The name Nicodemus, it means well liked or popular. Here was a man who was well known and respected in the community. He was a popular, very popular. But popularity does not save you. Being recognized as a Christian person, it does not save you. Being recognized as a spiritual leader does not save you. Being born again is not about popularity. But the scripture on your Facebook post does not get you into heaven. Calling yourself a Christian does not get you into heaven. Going to church on Sunday morning does not get you to heaven because everybody analyzes you and talks about how good, wonderful, moral, stable the person that you are. Everybody knows who you are and knows your name. Popularity does not save you. You must be born again. Amen. Prestige does not 
Savior. Jesus identified Nick as the ruler of the Jews. He was the one to whom people turned to for spiritual answers. He was recognized as the spiritual advisor, the religious guru, the one who spent his life studying the scriptures. His position was one of spiritual prestige, but he did not possess eternal life. He was the man when it came to religious matters, but he was not saved. He was not born from above because prestige does not save you. Because you can quote 316. Because you know in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Let every man that's a thirst come. Right. The Spirit of Christ says come. Yes. From Genesis to Revelation, you can know it. You can open up that Bible and somebody's having a problem with alcohol, you can take them back to Proverbs. It's short. Sure. Man, when people's having a problem with their marriage, you can take them back to the Song of Solomon and right over there to the Paul's writings about how man ought to treat like you know you can open it up and do all those things. A lot of times people will make the mistake of thinking that their busyness in doing the things of God they mistake it for spiritual growth. You can be busy. And know all the attributes of God and still die and go to a devil's heart. Right. This man, Nicodemus, he had position, he had popularity, he had prestige. Pity does not save him. Nicodemus possessed great religious knowledge. He was religious to the core. Nobody else was like Nicodemus. The Pharisees went to drastic measures to make sure they obeyed the letter of the law. Man, they fasted and prayed and studied the scriptures. Man, they lived spiritually disciplined lives. But they were lost. He was religious and lost. Do you know why? Because pity does not save. You can listen to me. You can come to church. You can tithe. You can go to Sunday school. You can lead a class. You can be a deacon. You can read your Bible. You can pray. You can witness and practice spiritual disciplines and yet still be lost. You can do all the things that pious people do and be without Christ. Pity does not say. I've heard so many people say, I live a good life. I try to do what is right. I go to church, etc., etc., etc. I try to live right. But living right does not mean that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you have a one on one relationship with Jesus Christ, He is going to be your everything. Listen. Are you living right? Are you living right? What is this thing of being born again? How do I break this cycle of religion? I know it was getting harder and harder as I preach because I'm nailing it. The Spirit of God is nailing it. That's right, man. There's some of you been in here for a long time, but you're lost. Right, come on. You're lost. You're concentrating. Your 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 focus. Is on because you don't cuss no more. Come on. You're, you're, you're focusing on because you don't drink no more. You don't drug no more. You take care of your children. You take care of this. You work. You put a roof over the head. You put clothes in the back. All these good words. You even slip a hand halfway up every once in a while say amen. You even nod your head when the preacher's preaching. You even know amazing grace by heart. And you can sing victory in Jesus and keep on the fire line. You know all the religious rituals. Right. But you're still searching for a loophole right. to live life like you want to live. You're still living your life at your convenience. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Can I say something right here? Living for Jesus ain't no convenience to the flesh. Right. That's where the battle comes in. Yeah. Because, well, I don't drink, I don't cuss, you know. I, I've had a transformation on the outside. Yeah. But there's got to be a transformation. On the inside. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Well, I've been making things right. I'm no longer doing this. I'm no longer doing right. This is wrong. And that's what, listen. God, everybody has a conscience. Right. Come on. Everybody. Right now, there is somebody somewhere that just woke up. Come on. And they got the head bad last night. Right. And they woke up, busted, broke, nowhere to turn to, 
And they said, oh my God, I will never ever do that again. That was wrong. I shouldn't have smoked it. I shouldn't have drunk it. I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have done this. I am never going to do that again. And you know what? They'll keep that at it. They'll be off of it, man. They'll quit it. They won't drink no more. They won't do the drugs no more. They'll start doing right. They'll start paying the bills. They'll start doing all these things. And they will mistake that as salvation yes, sir. Yeah. 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 in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So what does it mean to be born again? Being born again is about personal relationship. I keep saying that this morning. You can read that through 3 through 15 of John. Being born again is not about religion, Amen. but about relationship. It's about being born from above. John 3, 3 says, Jesus Easter said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You ain't going to see it. You can live right, talk right, spirit white, have all the good moral standard, keep the big ten, always occupy the house of God every time the doors is open, be here to unlock, be here to lock it, be the best moral citizen of the United States of America that you've ever been. You can know every child, every tittle of the law, keep it to the letter, just right. like the Demas. But God Almighty in heaven is going to look at you eyeball to eyeball. He's going to say, ye must be born again or you will not see the kingdom of God. What is being born again? It's a personal relationship. New birth is about a spiritual birth. Being born again is not a physical act because you don't drink no more. That's not necessarily mean that you've been born again. Because you go to church don't mean that you're born again. Because you got dunked in the pool don't mean that you got born again. It is not a physical act. It is not a mental or emotional decision. It is not a moral lifestyle. Being born again is to be born from above. It is a spiritual transformation that comes only through the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit of God. It is nothing that you can do by yourself. You can't turn over new things. You can't quit things. Turn things around. It is something that happens from above and only from above. It's a spiritual birth. New birth is a sovereign birth. 7 and 8 says, Marvel not that I say unto thee, he must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. For as so is every one that is born of the Spirit. New birth is God initiated and God controlled. New birth being born again, saved. Hey, my friend, lost, being saved, born from light to darkness, is initiated by God only. It can be initiated initiated by the preacher. It can be initiated by getting caught with your hand in the kitchen jar. It's initiated by God only. It, it is only God control. The preacher cannot control it. If it was the preacher, everybody would be saved. But I cannot save nobody. I have no power to transform nobody. I only have the authority to lift my voice and sound the Lord. that Jesus saved. And only Jesus saved. And we're called up in a vast cycle of religion. It is dead and people to hell. Amen. The new birth is a supernatural act. The new birth is a supernatural experience. They cannot, listen to me, listen to me, look at me. It cannot be tested or diagnosed. You cannot try Jesus. You cannot try church. Amen. This new birth cannot be tested and diagnosed. It cannot be placed in a test tube and examined. New birth is not a scientific, a scientific formula. There is no secret combination or recipe. You see, new birth comes only through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit of God. It is a supernatural process that produces supernatural results. You cannot explain the reality of genuine salvation. It cannot be explained. It can only be experience through God's grace transformation cannot be explained. I cannot put into words how there was a time in my life I had to have the marijuana. I had to have the alcohol. But all I know is on October 1st, 1995 there's a supernatural transformation that transpired down here in my heart with the liquor still in the bottle, with the dope still on the tray, with the rock and roll still in the house. But something happened down I can't explain other than this. It was a supernatural act of God. 
I can't explain it to you. The new birth. Has that ever happened to you? I ain't talking about getting on a religious kick and going to church for six months and being out for 30. Hey, you know, listen to me. You say what you want to say. Listen to me. Since the day I got saved, there ain't nobody ever knocked on my door and asked me where I was at. They knocked on it before. The preacher ain't never come to me and say, son, what's your problem, boy? Why are you all up in the air, blowing up like a hobby coat? Never. Never. Ain't nobody ever has. Hey, ain't nobody ever had to persuade me to tithe. Come ain't on. nobody ever had to persuade me to, to worship. Ain't nobody ever had to persuade me and tell me it'd be good for me to go to church. Ain't nobody ever had to persuade me those things. You say, "Preacher, well, you're just one of a kind." But no, I don't think so. I think there's a difference between religion and oh, relationship. Yeah. You see, listen to me. I've been on both sides of the fence. So don't take I'm just preaching this because I'm the preacher. I've been on both sides of the fence. I know what it's like to walk down. The Walnut Road at the age of 13 years old, professing no Jesus Christ. I know what it's like to have Jason Cole take me by the back of my head, submerge me in the water, out here in the hole, and come up being baptized of the whole church. I'm a new creature in Christ, but I also know what it's like to oh. carry my Bible home on Sunday night, laid up under the bed, and cut on my ACDC and oh. I also know what it was like. Hey, my friend is sitting in the church out, being bored out of my mind. Oh, my way to heaven. But being bored out of my mind, couldn't wait till the preacher was done. Hey, just doing my honors because Mama was happy I was there. The preacher was happy I was there. Hey, the Sunday school teacher was happy that I was there. The youth group was happy I was there. But down here on the inside, man, I couldn't wait till I turned 15 years old. And I got my restricted license. I couldn't wait till I turned 16 years old. Hey, till I got my real license. I couldn't wait to Friday night football. Where's the party going to be at? I can go home and home. Because. Come on. The same thing happened. 
Paul. I'll take the first 19. I met me. Yeah. Yeah, man. Come on. By the name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I don't spend my time trying to get away from it. Right. Right. I don't spend my time trying to avoid it. Right. I don't spend my time trying to fit him in my social calendar. Amen. He is my calendar. Right. Yeah. Breaking the cycle of religion. This is a supernatural act. The new birth only comes through a Savior. Yeah. Listen to me. It's all about a relationship. A relationship between a holy God and a sinful person. That God so saw us in our sinfulness, hopefulness, that He made a way. He sent a man by the name of Jesus, who was lifted up on Calvary's cross. And now the message rings as this: Believe in Him, trust in Him. Yeah. Being born again is about a personal relationship. It is not about a human effort. It's about a new birth. A spiritual birth that is initiated by God. Amen. Brought about through the death of a Savior. Transforming in His power. That whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Breaking the cycle of religion. Hypocritical religion. Hypocritical religion.